Today in Crypto The East Java branch of one of Indonesia's largest Islamic organizations Nahdlatul Chalalama, NU, has issued a fatwa deeming the use of cryptocurrency haram, or forbidden, under Islamic law. A fatwa is a non-binding legal opinion on Islamic law which is reached through a discussion called Abad Salmasail. Representatives from the Nahdla Chalalama, PCANU, branch management and several Islamic boarding schools throughout East Java attended the Abad Salmasail. Continue reading on Cointelegraph. GameStop, NYSE, GME, is serious about becoming part of the decentralized system. The company posted eight job openings focusing on NFTs and a Web 3.0 infrastructure. The gaming retailer hinted at the development of an NFT platform in May 2021. Every tech company is considering implementing a decentralized system to meet the expedited demands of digitally native consumers. Cryptocurrencies have reshaped the way business interactions between user and provider are tackled. The meme stock company, which gained popularity at the beginning of 2021, seeks to adapt to the new digital landscape by joining the decentralized movement. GameStop pushes toward decentralization GameStop wants to push the company's vision outside centralized standards. According to a new job posting, GameStop is looking for software engineers, product owners, and marketing specialists to help accelerate the future of gaming by exploring new methods of digital interactions. A total of eight jobs focus on this end goal of positioning GameStop as a market contender in the new decentralized system. In May, the company first dabbled with the decentralization idea when it revealed plans to launch an NFT marketplace, even releasing a website nft.gamestop.com. However, as a new job description highlights, GameStop seeks specialists with experience with Ethereum, NFTs, and blockchain-based gaming. The Verge highlighted that the move towards embracing decentralization and incorporating words such as Web 3.0 and NFTs is a tactic that can help reignite the passion of investors. Excel Lab magazine argued that the short squeeze made possible by a group of rogue redditors is an exemplary case for the power of decentralization without even incorporating blockchain into the mix. In that regard, GameStop investors embody decentralized financial freedom and Web 3.0 is the first step for the company to reinforce that feeling. On the flip side a high-performing stock such as GME is not always reflective of financial stability. Not every major player in the gaming industry agrees with embracing decentralization, as it hinders their profit margins. Web 3.0 is the next GameStop frontier without a doubt. NFTs and the metaverse are heavily emphasized topics that converge upon the digital environment led by Facebook's new market position of becoming a metaverse company first. Moreover, NFT sales have soared during Q3, amounting to $10,67 billion, while games such as Ixi Infinity reshaped the relation between users and games. Yet, not all game providers agree with the new digital meta. For example, Valve recently announced it would not support blockchain games or those who reward the participant with crypto. In that regard, GameStop might have found a gap in the market and a new avenue to keep their investors interested and vested in the project. On a similar note, AMC integrated Dogecoin and Bitcoin payments as a way to transpose their investors' ideals into their company culture. GameStop is a game vendor, and by definition, they should help release games regardless of their format. Web 3.0 is the next frontier for digital gaming because it offers users better control over their assets, creating an already demanded shift from the rental economy towards an ownership economy where players own the assets across the ecosystem without relying on the game developer's retribution. Why you should care? The Web 3.0 revolution is happening, and the fact that GameStop, a company that reflects digital natives' culture, Joined the bandwagon shows how the change is more than just mediated hype. However, the process should not be rushed in order to ensure the Web 3.0 implementation is seamless. Email newsletter join to get the flip side of crypto upgrade your inbox and get our daily coin editors picks 1x a week delivered straight to your inbox. Contact form 7, you can always unsubscribe with just one click. Continue reading on daily coin. By shutting down derivatives trading on Huobi, 
the company takes one more step toward closing its operations in China. Major cryptocurrency exchange Huobi has ended futures and other derivatives trading in mainland China today, as planned. Earlier this month, cryptocurrency exchange announced on its website that it will settle all futures, contracts, and other derivatives activities for all Chinese consumers today as part of the larger plan to cease operations in the country. According to previous announcements, Huobi, China's largest exchange, will today completely shut down futures, contracts and other derivatives functions for all Chinese users. Huobi was the first exchange to announce that it would withdraw from mainland China due to the Chinese government's persistent refusal to lift its Bitcoin ban on September 24. The largest cryptocurrency exchange in China held a shareholder meeting, at which time the company's shareholders unanimously decided to leave China and withdraw their operations. As reported by Cointelegraph, Huobi Group co-founder Du Jun has vowed to secure all crypto assets for Chinese accounts before permanently shutting down by December 31, 2021. Following Huobi's lead, other cryptocurrency-related platforms and firms such as crypto mining pools and mining equipment manufacturers adopted the same strategy. This list includes Binance, BTC.com, and Bitmain, among others. Coinex Crypto Exchange announced its withdrawal from China, and Renernbit, set up by the OTC king of China Zhao Dong is also shutting down operations. The exodus is the result of a government effort that began in late September, when 10 Chinese authorities, including the Ministry of Public Security and the Supreme People's Court, as well as the country's main bank, announced a blanket ban on cryptocurrency trading. Speaking at the Code Conference in Los Angeles in late September, Elon Musk, Tesla's CEO, thinks that crypto is on the verge of eroding China's Communist Party's power. As a result, the government's crypto ban is set to continue. Many crypto exchanges with Russian roots have fled the country or operate illegally, Blockchain Life's founder said. The Russian cryptocurrency market has grown to hundreds of billions of dollars despite the absence of sufficient cryptocurrency regulation, according to a major industry executive. Sergei Kotrov founder of the Russian cryptocurrency event Blockchain Life and Listing.Help, gave a keynote speech on the state of cryptocurrency regulation in Russia at the 7th Blockchain Life Forum in Moscow on Wednesday. Based on insights including local cash flows related to services like cryptocurrency mining, Katrov estimated the Russian crypto market to be worth 20 to 40 trillion rubles. $280.550 billion. He also claimed that Russian crypto businesses could generate as much as 284 billion rubles, $4 billion, worth of taxes per year, should the Russian government provide more comfortable regulations for the industry. But as Russian regulators have continued ignoring the industry's interests over the past several years, Local crypto businesses could do nothing but continue operating illegally or flee to other jurisdictions in order to survive, Katrov told Cointelegraph. Without regulations that take into account the interests of the crypto community, crypto services will not be legally provided. It isn't profitable for business to step out of the shadows, he said. Not a single homegrown cryptocurrency exchange has officially established its business in Russia despite the significant market size, Katrov stated. The executive said that he's been deeply committed to negotiating crypto legislation with various government authorities, and regulators have been well aware of local crypto people and businesses fleeing to other jurisdictions. According to Katrov, the Russian government has been looking for ways to bring big crypto businesses home but has failed to meet the industry's demands. He also stressed that the Russian crypto community has so far demonstrated a complete failure to understand how to pay taxes on crypto. related. Russia does absolutely nothing to regulate crypto, Recibhead says founded in 2017. The Blockchain Life Forum is a major Russian cryptocurrency event that takes place twice a year. The latest Blockchain Life Forum was in Moscow on Tuesday and Wednesday, bringing together more than 5,000 attendees and speakers, including industry representatives and state officials such as Russian Internet Ombudsman Dmitry Mayorinishev and the Minister of Economic Development's Alexei Minev. The forum featured executives from major global crypto exchanges, such as Huobi and Exmo, as well as local crypto entrepreneurs, largely representing retailers of Chinese Bitcoin, BTC, 
mining hardware. The event also featured a non-fungible token, NFT, auction organized through Binance NFT, the NFT platform and marketplace operated by the world's largest crypto exchange. The Australian securities regulator decided not to require crypto ETF providers to hold domestic crypto custody. The Australia Securities and Investments Commission ASIC, has issued its response to public consultation on cryptocurrency exchange-traded products ETPs, alongside fresh industry guidance. On October 29, the regulator released a set of regulatory requirements for funds looking to offer crypto ETPs including exchange-traded funds, ETFs, and structured products, following months of industry consultation initiated in late June. According to the official guidance, ASIC has so far greenlighted ETPs based on major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, BTC, and Ether, EDH, and expects more crypto assets to become a foundation for ETPs in the future, in order to become a proper basis for a crypto ETF. Crypto assets should obtain a high level of institutional support, a mature spot market, a regulated futures market, reputable and experienced service providers and transparent pricing mechanisms. The guidance reads, for each crypto ETF product application, licensed exchanges have to assess whether the issuer is able to fulfill its obligations in relation to the product including providing safe and secure custody as well as obtaining relevant licenses. In a response to public consultation, the ASIC also said that it doesn't require domestic crypto custody for entities issuing crypto ETFs, noting that such restrictions would unfairly limit competition. While we acknowledge concerns raised by respondents about overseas-based custody of crypto assets such as the potential for difficulties in recovering assets across jurisdictions, we consider it would be inappropriate to mandate a domestic custodian requirement, the document reads. Related, more than 40 digital currency ETFs await U.S. regulatory approval. The news comes shortly after Australian hedge fund manager Cosmos Asset Management debuted its crypto mining linked ETF on GX Australia on October 28. The Cosmos Global Digital Miners Access ETF began trading under the ticker GIGA and tracks several firms like Riot Blockchain, Marathon Digital, Hive Blockchain Technologies. Hut 8 Mining and others. Australian EDF provider BetaShares is also preparing to launch a crypto ETF linked to industry companies like Coinbase and MicroStrategy. The crypto ETF will reportedly start trading on the Australian Securities Exchange under the ticker Gripe next week. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.